Okay, so in this video, we will try, if possible, to evaluate the given improper integral. Now clearly, this is not an improper integral of type 1, as both bounds of integration are finite. So if this is to be an improper integral, it must be of type 2. And if you recall, type 2 means that the function we are trying to integrate has at least one discontinuity on the interval of integration. Well, let's see if that's the case here. So, our interval goes from 2 to 6. And let's see if we have a discontinuity. 1 over the root of 6 minus x. Well, first of all, we have to have the root of something positive, otherwise the function is undefined. But as x is never bigger than 6, 6 minus x will be positive, and so the function is defined everywhere between 2 and 6, but except at 6. If you look here, if x is exactly 6, 6 minus 6 is 0, the root of 0 is 0, and we have 1 over 0. And so the function blows up. And so we have an infinite discontinuity at x equals 6 at the upper bound of integration. So let's get let's sketch the graph of our function. When x is 2, 6 minus 2 is 4, root of 4 is 2, and so the function is 1 over 2, so we have a y value of 1 half. Now the question is, what happens to our graph as x is increasing from 2 to 6? And as we have just said, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 6. And it's a very simple function if you think about it. As x gets bigger, 6 minus x gets smaller, and so the root of 6 minus x gets smaller, but as we divide 1 by something which is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, the result is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, as 1 over something small is something big. So our function is increasing, and it goes up to positive infinity as x is approaching 6 from the left. As this will give us 6 minus 6 is 0, root of 0 is 0, a 1 over 0 case, positive infinity. So we have a discontinuity. So directly we cannot use the fundamental theorem of calculus as we need to have a bounded interval, check, and a continuous function on that interval, which is not the case. Once again we ask, well, how can we first avoid the problem, which here is the discontinuity of our function at x equals 6, and how can we then, with a limit, go back to the original improper interval? Well, let's see. As we have just said, the first step is to avoid the problem. We're trying to integrate from 2 to 6. The function is continuous everywhere between 2 and 6, except exactly at 6. So what if we, instead of going from 2 to 6, went from 2 to a value close to 6? Suppose we pick that point to be t. Then from 2 to t, for any t that is less than 6 and bigger than 2, the function now is continuous, so on that interval we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate our integral. So that's the first step. We integrate from 2 to t. But clearly both are not equal. So how can we then have this integral, which is the area under the curve between x equals 2 and x equals t. And again, this is the graph of at least over the interval from 2 to 6 of 1 over the root of 6 of the 1 over the root, yeah, of 6 minus x. Well, if we slowly let t approach 
six from the left, then our area will approach, if it exists, the area of this infinitely now high region. So we simply have to let t now approach 6, but again be careful. If you write this, this is actually wrong, because when t approaches 6, t could be less than 6, or t could be also bigger than 6. And since we have to avoid the discontinuity altogether, we have to let t approach 6 from the left. So t must, must always be slightly smaller than 6, therefore on the left. And as t gets closer and closer to 6, this integral will be approaching this integral. And that's it. So now, as always, from 2 to t, when t is less than 6, we have a continuous function over a finite interval, and we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Well, let's first find our antiderivative. Let me do it here, and then we'll go back to here. We're trying to find the antiderivative of 1 over the root of 6 minus x. We can make a simple u substitution, letting u be 6 minus x. Then the differential of u du is the differential of 6 minus x, the derivative of which is negative 1, and so we get negative dx. If you prefer, negate both sides, and so negative du is dx. And so now the integral becomes the integral of dx, negative du, times 1 over the square root of 6 minus x, which is simply u. And now we can find this easily with the power rule. Pull the negative up front, rewrite 1 over root of u as u to the minus 1 half, And from the power rule, we add 1 to the exponent. Negative a half plus 1 is positive a half. We divide by the new exponent, and we add c. We can, of course, simplify. 1 over 1 half is 2. That's negative 2 root of u plus c. And finally, we go back to a function of x. This is negative 2, the root of 6 minus x plus c. And now we have our antiderivative, so we can go back to our initial definite integral. So, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, this is again the limit, as t approaches 6 from the left, of our antiderivative, we can drop the plus c, so negative 2 root of 6 minus x. And we must evaluate the antiderivative from 2 to t. And now we're good to go. So replacing x by t gives us negative 2 the root of 6 minus t, minus our antiderivative at 2, but minus minus is plus, so plus 2, the root of 6 minus 2. Well, let's see what our limit is. As t gets closer and closer to 6 from the left, 6 minus t is positive, but will shrink to 0. 6 minus 6 is 0, the root of 0 is 0, and so this term simply shrinks to 0. This is a constant, and that's all we're left with. 2 times the root of 4, root of 4 is obviously 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. And so our improper integral converges to 4, and geometrically, if you look at the entire area, <coughs> of the 
region bounded between x equals 2 and x equals 6 below this curve, even though since we have a vertical asymptote here, the curve shoots up to positive infinity, we have this infinitely high region, it still has a finite area that is exactly equal to 4. And that's it. And so you see, the way to fix an improper integral of type 2 is very similar to the way we fix an improper integral of type 1. The only difference is here we let t approach a problem, which in type 1 is an infinite bound of integration, in type 2 is our discontinuity. And that's really the only difference. What's key is that you are looking for possible discontinuities.